You're watching Well-Traveled Life with Jonathan and Jennifer, and we are coming to you today from the capital of Nukalofa in the Kingdom of Tonga. But we're here to celebrate life, to see you knocking at our shore. It's a great thing. We celebrate life while we can. And there is something we'd like you to enjoy when you come down. Let me introduce to you, I'm here with the the best brass band in the kingdom, I'm telling you, it's the Tonga Police Brass Band. So we celebrate your arrival. We have music in our lives. What if you don't have music in our lives? You know there are things you can control, and you can control your happiness, your joy. We receive you with music. Because that's what Polynesian. So we're gonna have we're gonna have music this morning. Also with me is a group, it's a cultural group from a village out in the eastern side. Uh, it's called Pileamaka. And these people, they saw the brunt of tsunami. They're a bunch of survivors. Most of those villages got wiped off. And while they got wiped off, you're probably asking the question, how come they're still dancing? How come they're still happy, smiling and joy? But that is life. We want to give you something more rather than just arriving and seeing our culture. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the music. Let loose, let go. It's, uh, I'll tell you, last night was just the biggest heavy rain. And I'm amazed that the sun is coming out this morning to greet you. Here we go. I give you two Tongan words. So when you come down, you're already speaking Tongan. Having dance and music shoreside to welcome us isn't unusual in some of the more exotic and remote ports, but what we received in Tonga, in Nuka Lofa, was just spectacular. We felt so special and so welcomed and couldn't wait to get off the boat and discover this amazing island. As you come down the wharf, there's a tourist booth and a number of small shops. There will be a taxi stand past the little markets on the left, and there will be a person there that can guide you to either a group taxi, meaning a minivan, or an individual car. Inside the wharf, there are registered taxis, but they are not metered, so you'll need to organize your price before you leave with the taxi driver. Outside the wharf, there are unmetered taxis. Those are just people who have been called or know that there's a cruise ship in town and will offer rides. Registered drivers have permits and have a little more incentive to resolve any problems that you may have through their taxi cooperative. We opted to go with an individual car. We got our own driver, Rachel, and we were so pleased. We had an amazing day, follow along. We've never experienced something like that, where mm -hmm. someone comes and welcomes the ship. We always like that, Jonathan. The Every cruise ship come, she's the one. And the brass band, yeah. and the dancers. Yeah, and the floor show. Yeah, that's the, the one from the tourist. It was quite nice. Uh, she was wonderful. I, she fortunate. always liked that. She's humble. When you are with me, guys, I can do whatever you want. If you want to stop, I stop. Nukalofa sits generally in the center of the island of Tonga, and so you will either be visiting the west side or the east side, or for a longer tour, you will do both sides. There is something to see on both sides of the island. It just depends on how long you want to spend, how much you want to do, and your budget for the day. But I think you will find rates here for tours are very reasonable. Most taxi drivers will not be able to take credit cards, neither will shop owners be able to take credit cards. Local currency is the Tongan Paanga, and if you go to an ATM, you will get that currency out of the machine. You may also be able to use New Zealand, Australian, or American dollars, but you would need to have cash. Tonga has an incredibly rich culture involving language, music, dance, family traditions, family hierarchy, etc. We were fortunate enough to have Rachel who spent the entire day filling us in, teaching us and giving us the lowdown. I think you'll find the most fun part of this video is hearing lessons from her. Let's begin with the Tongan alphabet and the alphabet song. A, fa, ha, e, ka, la, ma, na, na, o, ba, sa, ta, u, ba, 
Fagawa, period. Oh, yeah. And then we sing it back. today malo lele and malo okay and goodbye yeah goodbye alua 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 okay alua bye alua <laughs> love love in english ofa ofa, ofa in Dongan. so changi cry yeah. and lofa love yeah lofa. and uh, i love you i love you in english in Dongan, Ofa Iakoi. Home, home. Yes. In Dongan, Api. Api. This is my home, my Api. On yeah. the west side, there's a series of attractions that are all relatively close together. You probably will start out at the Chief's Whistles, which is five kilometers of blowholes. They are phenomenal, and it's really great if you have a guide who will whistle to them, calling the waters forward. At high tide, the blowholes will shoot water up to 30 meters in the air, which is pretty spectacular. We were there at low tide, so what you're seeing here are low tide blowholes. blowholes from a little further down the coast in the background. The January 2022 tsunami, which was a result of an ocean-borne volcano, was obvious in almost all areas of the island. And while it isn't a tourist attraction, we felt it was really important to go see some of the destruction as well as some of the rebuild. And we're grateful to Rachel for taking us to resorts that were completely lost villages that were completely washed away, and how the Kingdom of Tonga has begun to rebuild in areas where the devastation had been so tremendous. Tonga is not an especially mountainous island, and so you can see how as the wave came towards land, it just devoured the entire shoreline. The villages that were a bit higher had a little better luck and had substantially less damage, but it also meant that people had enough time to escape and there was not a huge human toll. The place that the tsunami hit badly than us in here, in Nugalofa. 
Isn't it amazing? It hit the place that has the most people. Yeah. How many people were killed in the tsunami? The, in the west, it's three people. Three not, people? Yeah. Not terrible. Not much. No, it's it's property. Yeah, it's the, the another resort. This one is a resort, but see, no more house. No more. <laughs> so, the only tourism really that's come back is the cruise ships now? Yeah. That's really it. Yeah. That happened in January, right? Yeah, 15. 10 months yeah. to get a new house. So you've been living with your parents yeah, I'm this living whole with my time. Parents. And you know, nothing left. Everything is gone. This is Rachel's home that the Tongan government, with the assistance of many foreign governments, has helped to build. It's on the original site of her original home. And she was here with her husband, her two sons, and her three-year-old grandchild. They actually live right across the street from the side that the tsunami came up on. It was six meter high wave. They watched the wave come ashore, literally took themselves with nothing else and ran. The tsunami came ashore about four o'clock on Saturday afternoon and it literally swept her house away. She came back early Sunday morning, her house was gone. This new home built by the government will be ready to move into at the end of November. The tsunami happened on January 15th. You know, after the tsunami, that's the, the things that the people really need on the piece of water. The car and van over there, they just leave it there and they run. This is the village, the end of the west. Oh, Rachel, it just breaks your heart. The king offered them a piece of land and the government built the house. It depends on the, from the, the area. Eh? You see, my place is very close to the sea. So so when the wave comes from its I think it makes sense though that they didn't rebuild on the same place that got hit because another tsunami, even if they built it high like yours, it looked yeah. so vulnerable. Yeah. I don't think it would be strong enough, right? Yeah, you're right. You only had the water coming from one direction. You didn't yeah. have both directions. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like you would be safe? Because they said that, that the house is very strong. And you know what they announced on the radio? Um, this tsunami already happened, but maybe more than thousand years and there's another one. That's what they say. And this village not really damaged because they are high. So the tsunami rock was actually brought in ashore thousands of years ago by a previous tsunami. It has now grown all kinds of vegetation and is a permanent fixture. It lies on private land. So not all taxis can get back in here and you may need to walk. The owner of the land is actually in the United States and has not granted the Tongan government permission to own the land and maybe even use this as a actual tourist site. So this is really one of those things that a good tour guide will show you and take you to, but it may not be on a government list of things to do. What's really great is in the background of the tsunami rock, you can see these super great blowholes. And so if you're watching, you get the tsunami rock with the blowholes in the background. The two constants we saw in Tongan life were schools and churches. Those are obviously an important part of life on the islands. What was interesting though was the difference in schools for boys and girls and educational levels and attainment opportunities for boys and girls. There's a, a, a school for girls, but it's a religious school, the Methodist school, only girls and the government, it's a boys. But the Methodist church, they have a, a high school girl only and also the boys only. Tonga does have a university campus, but it's actually a university with a site in Tonga and the main university is in Fiji. 
everything from Fiji. Okay. Yeah? Okay, that makes sense. University of the South Pacific. Yeah. Got it. Flying fox, bad. One of the more unique animals in Tonga is what they call the flying fox, which is an endemic bat, which acts like a fruit bat. And we were surprised at how lively they were during the day. They reside predominantly in the village of Kolovai and live in this huge tree that is in a cemetery. So it was an appropriate place for us to be on Halloween. Before, they used to, to hang on that side, on that tree. But you know, because you know, the Tongan people, some of them, they come. They come and shoot them and move away. I heard that they were like, they belong to the king and yeah. that they are sort of protected. But, but you know, the, yes, that belong to the king. But the king didn't come and say, so the king, so and bring the soldier, the army to stand and watch. Missionaries went all over the world trying to convert people to Christianity. Yeah. That happened everywhere. Mm. But it really seems like it took hold here. Yeah. Why do you think that's true? I think because uh, they're successful in here because the Dongan, the church in Dongan is the most important point in Dongan. But I know that that's why they they successful because of the people and they believe. Every village they have a cemetery, maybe three, four. The large population is Catholic, and the next is uh, Methodist, and uh, and the Mormon. As a tourist, it's important to know that because of this strong religious affiliation and tradition, all shops, all activities will be closed on Sundays. So there's not much happening in town on Sundays. As you traverse the island, you are likely to run into the three-headed coconut tree. There's nothing special about this tree except that it's a palm tree that stands by itself in a field and has three heads at the top of it. Understanding that the tsunami had done damage to the reef around the lagoon surrounding Nukalofa, I still wanted to go see what the coral looked like in marine life. I was pleasantly surprised to find lots and lots of fish and some beautiful coral that was coming either back to life or had not been killed. The west is good for the snorkeling. Tonga was never colonized by another nation and is its own kingdom. It is the kingdom of Tonga, which includes three major regions and is represented by a male monarch whose throne is passed down to the male heir. You know, uh, Jeff, we, we love our king and then we respect him all our lives. When she get down and walk, yeah. She's like a, a, a dog and lady. On the east side of the island, the road will follow along the coastline, so keep your eyes out for beautiful views of those crystal clear waters. On this side, you will find caves, some snorkeling beaches, as well as the Ha'amonga, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this is the area to keep your eyes out at low tide for what they call the fishing pigs. These are just wild pigs that actually go rooting in the ground at low tide for crabs and that sort of thing. You may not see them fishing, but I guarantee you'll see pigs. They're little baby pigs. Yeah, right. I gotta go. <laughs> You're just a little peanut. Oh, that was fun. Having a private driver really gives us the ability to ask honest questions and get answers about culture and traditions that we might not feel comfortable otherwise asking. And we were so fortunate to have Rachel, who was so honest about her own circumstances and have meaningful conversations. 
We may not agree with all of the customs and traditions that we learned about, but it's so important that we understand them. And having a guide like Rachel really gave us that opportunity. When the father passed away, the oldest son is the heir. So if he didn't have a son and he only had daughters, would the daughter be the heir? No. In Dongan, in our tradition, there's no heir for the, for the ladies. The father passed away. He don't have a son, only a daughter. So you, the daughter can stay at the place when she's single. And you know, that if she married, he loses it. He, and everything, the land and everything that the father had is go back to the second brother. That's the law in Dong and Jonathan. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Because you know, Chen, we yes. ask to, to give the, the, the ladies the land, but the, the ladies have the land by, by lease. What that means is that women don't have any power or control over their own lives. Yeah. And it's, it's such an unjust way for women to have to live, that yeah. they are always in the control of somebody giving them something or yeah. somebody taking something away from them. But, but because I, I, I feel it, because I'm a woman, they need to, to have a land belong to me because of my children. But you know, they said, you, you married, and, and the land of your husband, it belong to your children. I hate to even ask this question. It, it's okay, ask me. What happens if your husband divorces you? If my husband divorces me, but we already have a son, the son gets the land. Where do you go? If, if he divorces me. Yeah. Remember, Chen, if he divorces me and have a mistress or... Yeah, they stay in the house. But remember, one day he passed away, and the heir for the for the land is my son. Yeah, I have to go back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> As you move towards the eastern side of the island, one of the crucial stops you'll make is at the Ha Amonga. It is a Stonehenge-like trilith, really worth seeing and brings to light all of the myths and legends and stories of how it exists and why it exists. When we reach to the Ha'amonga, yeah. you go take a pictures and then you walk. You walk through down there, there's another stone there, you take a pictures. Okay. You know, a Ha'amonga, the, the place, you know, the 2000, we look forward which country that the sunrise begin. So oh. that's Tongan. <laughs> and, and this is Hamonga and Maui. You go and read this uh, sign over there. It's, it's explained. Otherwise, I lie to you. You can look to the port and then you read the meaning. And then you take a picture and then you understand what's the real meaning of that place. We call it in Hamonga, but before a long, long time ago, uh, they say it's a wasila'a. Wasila'a, it means the watch and the sun. <laughs> On that time, and then, um, we have a big prayer at the field next to the palace. And then we look forward what time, what's the time that we saw the, the, the very, it's a new year. Jonathan, because you are a clever man, go straight there and read the reason and the meaning. Otherwise, I lie and then you say, Rachel is lying. Rachel's almost four-year-old grandson has lived with her since he was born. It's not unusual for grandparents to raise their grandchildren, and I think it is probably a measure to ensure that there's somebody to care for her and her husband as they age, since both of their sons live on another island. What's very traditional Tongan food? It's uh, tello rice. That's the main things that the people of Tonga, they always cook on Sunday. Cook the tello rice in a omo on the ground. Yeah. And do they stuff and the, the leaves with meat? Yeah. 
When it's cooked and then take it out from the ground and then we eat till it's raw fish, fried do you, fish. Do you put um, like lime juice on your raw fish? Yes. Yeah. But now, uh, but we use the, 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 the lime from the tree here. And there is another leaf, the cassava. The common leaves that are the same with the palusami. Captain James Cook landed in Nuvaloka in 1773. Because he was greeted by Tongans who offered a feast for him and his crew, he named it the Friendly Island. And that name has stuck. Is Rachel a common name here in Tonga? Les Yelis. Uh, Rachel in English and in Tongan, Les Yelis. L-E-S-I-E-L-I. Lesieli. I come by ferry with Leon. Oh, okay. And I look after him with all my life. And you know, Jennifer, he's my life. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this tour with Rachel in Tonga, you should see our other video on Bora Bora.